JB here. Hope everybody's doing outstanding. April 19, 2022. Just going to be really quick. It's 9.15, so about five minutes. Just want to talk uh, a couple things. Of course, Netflix reports after the earnings today. That'll probably be one of the, um, I guess, I wouldn't call it the, the biggest report. But I put on the watch list today. I talked about it yesterday on my rant that I think it's going to be important that there's not a huge uh, guidance drop in their subscriber ads and that Netflix, uh, the team, I don't even know if Hastings is going to do the video, but um, who, how is, uh, if there was a drop, are they going to, you know, talk about consumers cutting back on discretionary spending, which would be something that people look at and say, well, you know, if Netflix is susceptible, you'll have other um, subscriber-based uh, products and services that are probably going to get a hit as well. So um, I think it's going to be very important that they at least have inline numbers. The stock is down over 44% so far this year. Um, so it's tough to play on both sides. You take a look at the strikes. I mean, if you're a big bear on Netflix, you think they're gonna post a, a miss and a subscriber um, a guidance is gonna come, come in well below expectations or even negative, imagine that, if they, they haven't guided negative numbers. Um, I don't think, I can't even remember the last time, if, if, if at all. Um, so if you think so, the 260s, it's tough. Then you got to pretty much say that Netflix is going to be substantial uh, decline from its um, from its highs to start the year. So on the flip side, you look at the calls, and the calls are very expensive on, on the other side. So the probably the the worst case scenario is that it it closes closes flat the next next session or opens flat, and then it kills both sides. So I'll probably just sit on my hands. I was I was looking at Roku, and Roku has come off substantially off its highs as well. I mean. 109 bucks is a gap in the pre-market. Maybe that's a nice sympathy play if there's at least a, a decent numbers from Netflix. So definitely one I might I might look to add today. Um, so that's one. Uh, pool. So, I mean, that's a name, I don't know if it was last year or the year before with COVID. I mean, the stock has been uh, on a tear, especially as COVID accelerated people looking to make their homes a vacation spot. So a lot of new, new pools. So their install base has increased substantially. And then 60% of their six, well, it's actually $5.8 billion in revenues comes from maintenance of those pools. So the more, the larger their install base is, the more pools they install, uh, the, the recurring revenue for them uh, increases. So just a great story. Their margins have been increasing. They have, a, I think, a $450 million stock buyback program. They do dividends. Um, great story. It's down to 400 bucks. Obviously, a lot of stocks have been destroyed over the last couple months, with uh, you know, with the rising rates and uh, you know the compression margin, the uh, multiple compression is what all the analysts say, right? They they knock down their price targets because of the multiple compression in the entire uh, sector or what have you. But definitely, a name I'm watching. They report earnings on Thursday. Unfortunately, Thursday morning. Unfortunately, the premiums are ex extremely expensive. So, and they're only monthly strikes. Stocks at 400 bucks. I don't even see what is it 410 in the pre-market. So to to, uh, to try and get some strikes, have to oh it's 413.50 on the bid. Maybe some 470, 480 speculative. I would call them speculative calls because obviously it's nearly uh, you know 15, 20 percent to the upside. But um, I'm pretty confident going to po post a strong quarter. It's just going to matter how the how the market reacts. So definitely one I'm watching. Uh, Burlington yesterday gapped right out of the gate at the open. And the spreads are extremely wide, tough to get any kind of position. I was looking at the, four, the, the, the 230s. By the time it was gapping, they think they were dollar five or dollar ten. So not, not a name I was. I'm, I'm not going to chase. But certainly, I think it could get over the 230 mark if the market finds some kind of support here today. Uh, that's Burlington, uh, IBM. So IBM reports after the close, and I've played IBM many times over the last couple years, waiting for its uh, you know big blue to turn around. They had, you know, I talked about yesterday on my rant that the Red Hat acquisition, you would think, and the, the, the leadership change at the company, you would think at some point would start to bear fruit. It looked like it was doing going to do that last quarter. The stock did well in the after hours and pre-market and then kind of gave it all back. If they report at least a decent inline quarter and somewhat decent guidance, I think the stock trades into the 130s and holds there, if not higher. So I'll probably hold my calls pending... Um, the opportunity to close them out for 100% to cover costs and ride them into earnings, of course, high risk, because if they do report a, um, a miss or there's disappointing guidance, the stock could either stay flat 
or uh, even fall from here. So that's the thought process there on IBM. And then last but not least is Intuitive Surgical. And I talked about Intuitive Surgical, one of my favorite stocks from many years ago. I think it was one of my top five stocks back in like 2013 or 2014. But, um, you know, great story, similar to Pool, a huge recurring revenue stream because as they get the hospitals uh, to, to get their robots, then those uh, hospitals, they pay for instruments and uh, procedural uh, revenue. So as every procedure they get a, a recurring revenue from, um, so that's always a big mark for Intuitive Surgical is what is their year-over-year -year growth in, in um, procedural growth because that's where the bread and butter is. That's where the margin is, all, all that fun stuff. Uh, stock has come way off the highs as well. Again, a cash-rich company. I think they have $8 billion, $8.6 billion in cash, no debt, uh, active stock buyback program. Um, just a great, great growth story as well. So that's another name I'll be watching. Again, premiums are pretty expensive. They reported after the close, I believe, on Thursday. Um, it, it was uh, traded down yesterday, so maybe that's an opportunity. But the premiums didn't come out too much. I mean, the 300 strikes don't look look interesting. Maybe the 305s, 45 by 70 cents on the 305s. Get a bump up today and tomorrow. Um, close them out to cover costs and ride the rest. So that's certainly not a possibility. Um, I think that's it. A BPT still churning here. Oil's down, so it's getting some prints here in the pre-market at 1550. Hopefully that finds some footing here and starts to head towards that 20 handle in the coming week or two. And uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for listening to Rant. Let's have a great day. I'll try and get on later. Rock and roll.